welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. We're working on block six of our 2017 Christmas quilt and it is this beautiful ornament. You're going to make a couple. I mean, you could do two or three. It's up to you. Um, but I, we've already obviously got one made, so we're having a couple in ours. So this is the red and the blue one and it turns out to be about ten and a half by ten and a half and, uh, and of course you're going to add your little pieces as we're building our little row out so don't worry about that just make sure you have your common background little sashing piece and uh, so we're just gonna build it okay so what we need have here is our two little side pieces and then our top piece right here and then these right here and now this pretty much is what we need to build is the ornament itself I chose green and red for the second time around just because I really like those two colors together and it's going to pull in a little bit of different colors from the rest of the quilts right so or the other quilt blocks all right, so this is the bigger piece here, which is three and three quarters by, th no, sorry, three and one quarter by three and one quarter. And that is then gonna end up giving you this piece down here, what we're gonna need, okay? And then this one is gonna be the other half, so on and so forth, okay? So let me just show you how to do that first, and then we'll work on all the other half square triangles. You know how to do that. This one was just a little bit of a tricky one, so I wanted to show that first, okay? So I marked my line from point to point, and I'm gonna sew on either side of that line, making giving myself a one quarter inch seam allowance, okay? So we'll wake up a little Nomi here, put on my old lady specs, and get some sewing done. Oops, helps if I have my foot on the right pedal. And I just have a nice white thread and I'm going to just stitch on both sides. Okay. Hopefully you're having a fantastic Saturday and enjoying it. Okay, so now we've sewn here and here. We're actually going to cut this this way and then this way and then these little pieces are going to end up being what we need for our little tiny little tri two triangles together, okay? So just cut, make sure you're lining it up. And then always, unless you have the little twisty mat, pick up your ruler and replace it on your fabric. Don't kind of just wiggle it across the top or you're going to end up with something wonky. And then that's what gives us those little pieces that we need, okay? See whether that's, you know, that side, which would probably would end up being, and then this one ends up being for this side, okay? And then you have two others. So, I mean, you can put that in the extra to-go pile, or if you wanted to, I don't know, probably, I'm sure you could do something with them, add them to something else, add them to another little white square or something, okay? So put that off to your side. There's always extra bonuses. All right, so now that we have those two, let's give them a little press. We're gonna press to the dark, er, which is, to me, is the green. Okay. Do do do. Okay. Now we're gonna put those in their little perspective spots on this one, so we're not gonna lose them. Okay. And we'll partner it up with this one right here, which we're just gonna lop right in half. And he's gonna go there, and he's gonna go down there. But we will sew them once we get all these done together. Okay. So yeah, we're making progress. He's not too far, and not too hard. Really, that was the hardest piece right there. All right, so the rest of these half square triangles, you're gonna sew, you marked a line from one end to the other, whether you use this ruler or your little one that gives you the gap in between. Oh, hold on right here, just have to reach for it. There you go. One of these rulers, okay, which you can just place on and then just mark on either side and then those would be your stitch lines, okay? But if you don't have one of those and you just have a, just a regular ruler, just edge to edge and then, or corner to corner, not edge to edge, corner to corner, and then just a quarter inch off your, your foot, okay? So we're pretty much just gonna chain piece all these. Make sure you got your corners lined up. If some of your squares aren't, you know, perfect or whatever, you may have to do some little trimming. You're going to have to lop off the ears anyways, or tails, whatever they call them. Can't believe it's almost the end of the month already. Where did the whole month go? So busy make, working on Christmas stuff. <laughs> I'm almost missing Halloween. <laughs> Do, 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 do. 
And you can pick really bright contrasting colors like gold and blue or what have you. I just, I, I love the whole red and green and the, the red had a little bit of holly on it and I thought, and then the green had a little bit of star on it. So I thought oh, that would make a nice little cool little ornament. So that's that ended up being my ornament. So this block design is by Pop of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop, and it is available for a uh, download if you are interested in it. We do have a couple more that we have created here at the quilt shop that will be in the quilt as well. So look forward to those. We're very excited. Oh. Okay, and then you have, of course, one white with a solid, with green, uh, because I'm, I'm using green instead of the blue in this uh, um, aspect, and the red is still gonna be the same. So you're gonna need a block here, because that's a block right there. It's a half square triangle and a half square triangle right there. So this is the one we're gonna need for that, and we're just gonna do the same, so on either side, okay? It comes together pretty fast. Uh, once you get all the little half square triangles dealt with, really. Okay, so now we're gonna take our little tail and flip it around and do the other side and then we'll cut and press and start sewing, okay? Make some progress. Pop really likes to design and um, Sometimes you can't always find exactly what we're looking for out there. Um, and so he takes a little challenge upon himself and, you know, tries to play around with it a little bit. And, you know, I said, it can't be too complicated. You know, we want to keep, make sure people are still wanting to follow along with the project. But we do want to make it so maybe they challenge themselves a little bit too, right? So a little bit of confidence goes a long way. All right, so there's our tail. And we're just gonna lop these guys with the thread cutter and then we're gonna cut them. Okay, do 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 do. And then we're gonna press them open. All right, do do do. Okay, put that over to, I think I almost need a new cutter. I think my blade is dull. It's getting dull. I'm trying to think what I've been trimming up, but it's been a lot of things. Sometimes you forget to change your blade and you don't realize how much time has passed and, you know, before you need to put a new one in. There we go, just a couple more. And then we're ready to press. And of course, I think to me, the darker, darker of the two is the green. So I'll be pressing towards that. Okay, and then we may, we'll have to, we're gonna have to trim them up just a smidgey, okay? So we're good to go on that. Let's just press these open. Make some pretty little half square triangles. Yeah, some of these are a little, not quite as uh, square as I'd like, so we're gonna have to do some trimmings. They should equal to be two and a half, because we cut them at two and seven eighths. So two and seven eighths on a half square triangle gives you a two and a half inch square, okay? Same if you were to do three and seven eighths, that would give you a three and a half inch square. So if you wanted to make your block a little bigger, make it a little bit smaller, you know, that's completely up to you. Um, just know that you have the math to, to help you, okay? It's there. If you need a chart or something, there's lots of charts out on the web. You know, they help with finding the on-point triangles and the top triangles and so on and so forth. And, you know, the corner ones. Yeah, it's very, they're, they're quite handy. Okay, so we got our little buddies pressed. Now, I thought I was kicking the cat. It was just the, my garbage box. Okay, so we're just going to lop these off. I'm going to line them up. You have lines on your board, right? You don't need necessarily a little square tool of sorts, but you have a lines on your board. You put your stitch line right on that, and then you can say, oh, all right, that's not quite two and a half there. You know, so if I put that there, look at that little tiny little bit of smidge of green at the top, but that's enough to throw you off, really, when you think about it, right? So and then put them up again and say, okay, yeah, he's looking good. Lop off the little tail, okay? So you'll have to do that with all of them to make sure they're, they're A-OK. -okay. 
You don't have anybody who's a little bit wonkier than the next. Okay, he looks good. And he looks good. Okay. It does take a little bit of time, but, you know, pop a good movie on or some music and jam out to Lionel Richie or something or, you know, ABBA, <laughs> Phil Collins. They're all good ones. <laughs> We actually kind of found a uh, uh, a band that we like. Well, no, I can't even say they're a band. They're a cappella, aren't they, honey? Yeah. Uh, called Home Free, and they're out of the States. Um, and they do some beautiful cover songs and some originals of their own. Yes? Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Um, they are awesome to sing along to, and they've got some really good beats. And I like it that they are the beats. You know what I mean? They're their own little beatbox. So... Just this one is a little wonky way out. I could tell as soon as I put it down on the table here. Just want to, he seems to be a sh bit shy on that two and a half on that one side. So he may be, have to be an outside piece. Oh, the joys of cutting. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, they're a good band. And sometimes you just, you know, need to jam out to something that's not too, you know, rock and rolly or classical or you know just want something a little bit different when i when pop and i met he was a barber shopper <laughs> singing away he used to love watching him okay i know this is boring part but you still gotta do it Okay, that one might seem a little funky on his two and a half. Is he on the two and a half? No, he's good. Turn another light. Ah, there we go. It just one of the, I knew one of those sides was just out just by smidgey. And even those little smidgies will make a mess in the end. Let me tell ya. If you figure maybe sometimes your blocks aren't lining up all the way. Maybe just, you know, your block wasn't quite squared. Had one side a little out. And then, of course, that just continues up to ricochet as it's going on, or domino effect as it goes up around the quilt, right? So that's why I think we're, um, us long armors are very, uh, not uh, not stressful, but they stress um, how uh, your borders are put on. You know, you don't just go from one end to the other and sew. You know, you measure your three times around the quilt, the top, the middle, and the bottom, and then you average that out and, you know, cut the piece and so on and so forth. And instead of just, you know, because that's the wavy borders are a nightmare. You know, you're trying to do the best you can for someone on their project. And they've already spent so much time on it already and, and money and everything else, you know. Just take a couple minutes to do the, the borders, right? And you'll have a beautiful end result, right? And it's just the same with these little tedious thingies here of the trimming up, you know. It still needs to be done and it does change the whole over effect of the quilt, right? All right, almost there. Thanks for being patient. It's just a process and we got to work ourselves through it. Okay, now got our little fuzzy mess here. Doo -doo -doo, put that up to the side. Okay, now let's sew these two together that we need to. Okay. And be careful coming up under these points. Lift your foot of your machine all the way up. Come in a little bit because you don't want that point getting all jammed up under your machine. That's going to be a pain in the bum and you're going to be mad and we don't want that. Happy, happy sewing all the time. Okay. So come down just a little bit in. Line it up on your quarter and then just putter away and go right off to the other side. There we go. And then line up the next one. Try and make it, you know, if you think about it, just try and make it as easy as possible so you don't get frustrated. You know, I know how it's very easy to get frustrated. And if I didn't know any better, I'd say today was a Monday because just everything was going crazy. <laughs> Pop would agree. <laughs> okay, 
Now we're just going to separate those two and press to the dark. So we're going to fold up the dark colors and press up. And of course we're going to lop off those little tails like we did these guys. Okay. And you want to make sure that these guys also are two and a half when finished. Because you're going to have three seams on here. Okay, you got this one, oh, sorry, this one, this one, well, sorry, two seams. Well, this one and this one. And then you want, you want to make sure that they're still going to line up to your two and a half. Okay. Almost seems a little bit long on that two and a half. Just a smidgy. See, even that little bit, even that little tiny bit does change things. Annoyingly so, but yes. All right, now let's line it up. See how it's looking. And sometimes it's easier if you to pre-mark on your tape because you know if you're always going to two and a half. You can put a little painter's tape or something right there and just make sure it's butted up right up next to it and, and go from there, right? Some of these in this little corner doesn't want to be straightened out. There we go. That's better. Okay. All right. Just a little bit off the top there. Okay. So we know we got those two pieces that we need. Okay. Here and here. And now we can start building out our sections. Okay. We know we already have our um, top to our ornament here, and there is the top piece that adds to it there. So we can, if you want, you can sew these right now. Um, pick your, pick a nice gray. Don't pick too light. I think I did a little bit too light on this one. Um, maybe a little bit darker or contrasting at least to your uh, outside fabric, your um, background fabric you want to really want to be able to see the top of that ornament. Okay. All right, so let's just press this to the dark. And once we build the two middle rows, we'll attach this to the top of it, top of those two rows here. Okay, so now here we're going to go is this would be the bottom, and then we're going to make it so it's just like this one here. Okay, there, and then we have one of these guys for the top. If I'm not mistaken, right? Right, pop. I think that's split. I think that's it. Let me just make sure. It's there. I'm sorry. Yeah, at the very top of it. Yeah, I was just trying to build this section out. But yes, you are right. Okay. And then you'll add your top, your white square at the top of your two and a half. Okay. And then we know these two go together, so we'll sew those together. So that goes there, and this goes here, and then the white one on the top. And then we will press the row once we get it sewn together. Okay. And then I will show you. We're just going to build a couple more. That's pretty much it. Because, yeah, the most longest part is trying to get those half square triangles all dealt with. And everything you need, you need to deal with them, like cut them or press them. And... There we go. There's a bit. See? It's a bit of our ornament. Well, move that over there. But they're the same pieces. Okay. All right. So let's build the other one. Okay. So we know we need the... Red is going to go like that. Nope. The red is going to go like that. I was just going to say, it's not doing the zigzag that we're supposed to. <laughs> Something was wrong there. Okay. And then it goes like this. No, it doesn't. It goes like... Nope. I will get this right. Hold on. I, yeah, I don't think I just can do it upside down. That's just me. I just can't. I can't process it. 
Okay, so he goes here, and he goes there, and he goes here. There we go. And he goes there, and then we got one more on the bottom. Okay, so which goes there. All right, because you're forming that little ziggity zag with those prints. Okay, so let's flip these two, and so, and then we'll flip the other two, and so, and then we'll do the other side, and then sew those two little rows together from the center. Okay. Okay, so here is that one, and then there goes this one. Okay, now sew those two bottom ones together, or the two middle ones, okay, to form that little ziggity zag. That's my cell phone making noise. <laughs> all right, now we'll do the other row. Let's get it all placed out so we're not confoozled. Okay. It's very easy to get confuzzled with the uh, half square triangles. I've been there, done that. Okay, and there. Okay, see, do, 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 it's coming together. So let's just pop those two together, and then the two on top, and then we'll iron. We'll get pressing. Press, do sew this one, then we'll press those two rows, and then we'll have to pin them together. Okay. All right, get all tucked together here. <laughs> Keep shifting and shifting. All right, so there's those two center pieces all ready to rock and get attached to the top part there. So this is where you want to pop in a couple of pins because you really need to make sure those points are really coming together, okay? So give it your best shot. Even pin right up at the end because even some, even that shifting as you're sewing, even that little bit of off is going to make your, get the seam rip out. <laughs> See, your word is hope, H-O-P-E, hope. And I hope you guys are partaking. <laughs> Only got six more to go. All right, got those two middle sections sewn together. We'll give that a press and then we'll attach its top part to that, which is the top of the ornament. Okay, I'm loving those together. Okay, see that goes right there. Okay. Okay, see, here and here. Look how it's coming along, okay? You're gonna attach this to that one, but we're gonna build this other one first before I was gonna attach them all, all together sort of thing, okay? So we know this upper part here, because it's the opposite over here, and we know we have a few more of these to do. There's only two, and they're only gonna go a certain way, if I can figure this out, because I'm a dork. Nope. Nope. Ouch. See, I told you I can't do this upside down. I clearly am challenged. 
Okay, there we go. And then this guy right on the bottom. Okay, so, and of course that one at the very top. So whichever way you want to do these, just make sure you get them in the right order. Okay. I like that red and green one together. They look really cool. I wasn't quite sure. I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe it's too literal, red and green, right? So, but no, I like it. I like it because that little red has a little bit of uh, green in it too. So, I didn't want to just do a solid, you know, ornament ball. I want something with some color and some pizzazz to it because it's going to be added to our block. You know, if you want to add sequins and beads and fancy threads or whatever afterwards, that's all up to you. It would totally make the, um, the Christmassy feel for that quilt awesome though because you know Christmas and lights and twinkles and you know all that fun stuff. All right so there's the last one there. Okay so let's press this and then we'll sew our little panels together, our little columns. That's kind of how we built this. We didn't do it row by row not this way. We did it by columns this way. So, you know, sometimes you have to think of it a little bit differently and uh, it'll all work out. So, okay, for some reason that's a little, looks like a snake, <laughs> like a crazy snake going on there. All right, so now we want to add this to this. I don't really see the need to pin. Uh, if I was trimming anything, I was trimming the white, you know what I mean? I'd try to more line it up on the bottom and trim the white up a bit, but this seems pretty good. Of course, it's all fabric manipulation and whether you were consistent or not on your seam allowances, right? Whether it's a scant or quarter right on or what have you, everybody's sometimes a little bit different. Now let's sew this one together. Okay. Line them up. And then we only got a couple more seams and it's done. And I thank you for watching and if you've subscribed or whatever upvoted the video, we really appreciate it. All right, so let's press these guys and then we'll sew two more seams together and then we're good to go. Okay, we want to press to the dark because that white is really going to show off all that red and green on the side of that ornament. So let's press over there, get all that little busy junction going on on this side of it, right? Okay, now same for this one. If you see that shadow effect as you're stitching, you're going to be mad at yourself for pressing it the wrong way. All right. Beautiful. Okay, now that goes outside and that goes outside. What do we think? Oh, it looks really cool. Okay, now here's again, you want to pop some pins on these little seams right here to make sure you're matching those triangles, uh, those points up, okay? This is where you get to wiggle and woggle or snuggle or whatever's those seams to get them sitting right next to each other. Okay. And you can probably pin the both sides at the same, well obviously not at the same time, but one right after the other and then sew them down. Okay, make sure that's sitting there correct way, not flipped over. It is. Let's snuggle those little seams. It certainly has turned colder, but scraped my windows off. So, and wear my layers for crossing guard. I think I'll find lawn johns. I don't want to have to go find lawn johns. <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay, now we're going to sew down those two seams. Oops, <laughs> I pinned that one in there, but not like I would have sewn it in. It's not going to touch it. But uh, <laughs> it's like, why is it not opening? <laughs> All right, so sew down both sides and then press and we are done. And I would love to see your ornament block if you decide to make one, okay?
I am making two of this size for this quilt. And these two will go in the quilt, okay? But like I said, if you really love this block and you want four of them, then make four. Your quilt's just gonna be a little bit bigger. All right, there we go, nice. And this is a good time to check your, check your seams. I don't know if you can see those at all, but uh, they, they seem pretty good. Yes, no? Yeah, yeah, okay. And that's all had to do with the pinning, okay? And being, you know, a little bit more persuasive with the fabric. <laughs> but if you start off with a straight edge, the chances of you finishing off with a straight quilt are, are pretty good. If you start off with a wonky edge, the chances you have in a wonky quilt are pretty good. <laughs> All right, then a press. And this cute little ornament block to go with his buddy there is done. Oh, I like it. Very cute. And you wanna make sure you put on the whites attaching to these sides first, because if you're trying to attach this little thin piece of white to this whole block, you're probably gonna end up with a bit of shifting. So, um, I don't know, that's just the way that uh, we think it should come together the best for you. So we hope you give it a try. And uh, you may end up with a couple little extra bits, but it doesn't mean you can't go and make another, you know, Christmas ornament, you know what I mean? Like you can just do it in the reverse order, right? Could have, oh. Whatever, Some, one, one of this and one of that. It's completely up to you. So thank you very much for uh, watching today. We really appreciate it. And we will see you tomorrow on the live stream where we're working some more of continuing the tree skirt, extending some of those little triangle panels and adding some very Christmassy uh, applique stuff to them. So uh, we will see you then. Thanks very much and have a fantastic day. Bye-bye, everybody. Let's show them up.